two steps forward, one step back. I think that's the best way to describe this one. It's the new Mako Sport or 40 millimeter Mako from Orient. And for a lot of you, this is exactly what you've been asking for from Orient. A well-made, smaller original diver with a sapphire crystal from an established brand. One that's known and respected for their affordable divers. Not an always sold out micro brand or an Amaji clone from AliExpress, but a real brand with history and heritage and real distribution channels. However, it's not perfect. There are a few issues here, including one massive one from Orient that may prevent you from buying it. But before we get to all the nitty gritty, I do want to thank Tom over at Tuss Watches for letting me know this watch was coming, but also selling it to me at a discount since he knew I'd be reviewing it. So if you're looking for an Orient or have any questions about them, even if it's an Orient star, Tuss is a great place to start. That said, let's get the elephant out of the room here and talk about the massive glaring mistake Orient made with this dial. And Alton over at Half Past Blog deserves most of the credit for seeing this and getting the word out about it. There have been a few other reviews that have talked about this, but none of them seem to mention Alton. I think that's a glaring omission on their part. But let's talk about Orient. Now here, if you zoom in at the 26 minute marker, yeah, 26 minute marker, you'll notice that it's a bit off. It's a lot closer to the applied index at the five than the one on the opposite side. And here you might think that the dial has been rotated or that the index is applied wrong, but this goes much deeper than that. As every single 40 millimeter Mako has this printed on the dial, every colorway. And even until recently, the renders on Orient Japan's website even had this issue, which means this was an F up from the very beginning, the very initial designs of the dial. And somehow, somehow this made it all the way through development to production without anyone noticing. And don't get me wrong here, this is completely unexcusable and fully rant worthy. Yet, I gotta admit, I actually find this kind of amazing. I mean, if this was an AliExpress watch or a brand new micro brand, it'd be like, yeah, I, I get it. You guys need to be more careful. But with Orient, and I'm sure somebody got fired here, but with Orient, this isn't just the mistake of some drunken salaryman. This represents failure on multiple levels of the organization. As I said, this went from development all the way through production, and nobody noticed it. Now, Orient is currently aware of it, and they are actively working to fix this, both with the current inventory and those that have already been sold. So three months from now, maybe six, this won't matter anymore. But if you're interested right now, it is something you need to be aware of. Although, interestingly, Tom over at Tuss mentioned that a lot of people have been emailing about getting these versions, the ones with the messed up dials. I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty minor issue, and the watch is still very usable as it is. So I don't know if they think it'll be worth more later, or if they just want one for the heck of it, but that's also something to be aware of. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get to the nitty gritty. And with this 40 millimeter Mako, you can almost think of it as a 39. It's actually 39.9 if you go straight across, but the bezel's almost 39, as this is a case if you go from the 12 to the 6. So take that and combine it with the short 46.5 millimeter lug to lug. And this watch wears more like a 39 than a 40, which really is what people have been asking for. Now, total thickness is 12.9, and that does include a flat sapphire crystal, as well as Orient standard case back. Water resistance is a standard 200 meters with a signed screw down crown, while total weight is a solid, but not too heavy 160 grams on its bracelet, give or take a link or two. Lug width is 20 millimeters, and it's all powered by Orient's F6722 movement, which is fairly equivalent to a Seiko NH35. On the wrist, the watch feels pretty good. One advantage of these folded end links, which we'll talk more about later, is that they are set up as a female configuration. So the bracelet immediately starts curling down your wrist, and it's pretty well balanced with that clasp. The only downside that I'm seeing here is that the bracelet, as well as that clasp, is a little big in proportion to the size of the watch. Nothing crazy, but I think it would have been better with more of a taper. Now, one important thing to note here is that this isn't just a smaller version of one of Orient's other watches. The design here is its own thing. But after seeing and reviewing most of the Orient divers out there, I kind of look at this as almost a greatest hit. 
as the case is very clean and streamlined with no crown guards. You have a brushed top, really narrow chamfers, and very polished sides. To me, it's very 60s skin diver-ish, and with the stainless bezel, very reminiscent of Orient's recent 1964 reissue. The one that was extremely limited, not the second release that I reviewed. Then there's a the dial. I believe there are currently five different colorways. And here, Orient did a great job of having some standard color options, as well as a couple more vibrant ones. This is the blue version, and it's this very deep, dark, steely blue. And in the right lighting conditions, it looks fantastic, giving the watch a touch of elegance, as well as giving the polished steel and white loomed indices some needed contrast. And the designs of the indices here seem to be a bit more modern than the 1964, and to me, they are more similar to the Kamasu, or Kamasu. Although, unlike that watch and most of the other Orient divers out there, over at the right we have a simple date, instead of a day date, which I assume was chosen just to reduce the clutter of an already smaller dial. A good choice on their part, and while I as usual would have preferred the date down at the 6, here it does look good with its metal framing, and it's just about the right size to be easily readable. Now the handset here is more fitting with this design but the partial skeletonization reminds me a lot of the Orient Star Diver, and that's one of my favorite parts of it, and here as well. Especially with the angles and the depth to the hands here, they catch the light and help them easily stand out. And I really appreciate that they're not flat, like a lot of other divers at this price range. Plus, the yellow tip of the second hand is a really nice touch with just enough color. I think there's a great balance here overall between the various design elements. It's a bit classic, as well as a bit modern. It's a smaller watch, but not one so small it's hard to read. Or that the dial looks boring and flat, it has quite the presence for its size. And that steely blue dial looks amazing at times. Yet it's not so flashy that it ever overpowers the polish of the hands and the indices. Everything here comes through distinctly and clearly creating a good looking diver that's highly functional as well. It's a pretty sharp looking watch, and perhaps even better looking than the Kamasu. And when I look at it, I just get this sense that a lot of time and effort was put into this design, to create a truly great everyday watch. Which is partially why that dial misprint is so surprising. If that's the case, how did they miss it? I guess they were just too focused on getting the other aspects right, they couldn't see the forest through the trees. Although, one big thing to note here is that for me, this one comes across a little more dressy than Thule. And in some ways, it's more of an everyday desk diver than something to be used and abused in the water. Which is still a good thing. It's good to have options out there. And especially for those who want something more like an everyday office watch than, say, a turtle or a monster. I like both of them. They're great watches. But I think this one's going to look better with business casual than those and should fit better under a sleeve as well. The bezel is another good example of desk diverish design. It's 120 click, unidirectional, and is Orient's typical muted action. If you've ever had one, you know what I mean. And Seiko really isn't much better. But if you notice at the top here, there's no loom pip, something every true diver should have. And it's a little disappointing that Orient left it out. I'm also not a huge fan of the polished sidewalls as they will accumulate micro-scratches over time. But unfortunately, that's just how Orient chooses to do their divers. But since this is a smaller diver, it has an appropriately smaller crown at the right. But even with that, I didn't find it too hard to get a grip, unscrew it, and use it. Although if you have fatter fingers than I do, you might. So I think this one really is geared towards those with mid to slimmer wrists. Those of you in the seven and a half and above, there you got plenty of other options. And as for the loom, well, that's another area of disappointment. Not just because of the bezel. The dial here lasts a little bit longer than a Vostok. Well, the hands stay in it a bit longer, but it's definitely not Seiko worthy. Or anywhere near as good as my Kamasu. Which is really the reason I'm disappointed in it. You see, the Kamasu is a fantastic watch when it comes to loom. At least for the price. Orient had that one dialed in, as well as the Orient Star Diver. But here, as well as the recent Mako 3, Orient's just fumbled the ball. So overall, I'd say the loom here for a diver is just okay, but it is disappointing for Orient. Just okay is also how I describe the bracelet. 
And if you've ever had any other Orient Diver in this price range, you'll know exactly what to expect here. It's just here it's a little bit smaller at 20 millimeters instead of 22. But you still have those sloppy folded end links, solid links secured with pins, as well as a press clasp all in an oyster style bracelet. Now from a design standpoint, proportionally I think this looks a little bit big for this case size. And Orient really should have tapered this more aggressively, or any taper. Now again, it is okay for the price and completely usable, it's just nothing really to write home about. Which is why if you're interested in the lavender or the salmon colorways, but you're kind of hesitant because it only comes with a strap, I say go for it, because you're not going to miss much here. And hopefully, like with other Orients, there will eventually be some third-party options available for a bracelet. Plus, this one is a bit of a strap monster, so you might as well have some fun with it. With regard to price and value, I'm not exactly sure what MSRP is, but they do seem to be selling for around 300 US, give or take. And that is pretty standard for a new release from Orient. So if you compare this to Seiko's and Citizen's in this price range, I think the quality is going to be about the same. It's just Orient's going to have an advantage with the Sapphire Crystal. And it's important to realize that eventually the prices here will drop. These days you can always find a Kamasu for about 200 bucks, so I wouldn't be surprised if you find these for that about a year from now. Once they become more available, of course. And at that price, with both mainstream and micros, that's going to be pretty hard to beat. Bottom line, two steps forward, one step back. Assuming those dial issues get fixed, this is going to be a great entry level diver. The last part of this review may seem a little nitpicky and negative, but you got to remember it's all in relation to the price. So for what it is, and assuming that dial issue still gets fixed, I think this is a good addition to the Mako lineup. One I think Orient fans will eventually be proud of, and one they talk about for years to come. I mean, people still pine away for the smaller SKX, and nothing was ever released to really replace that. And this is coming pretty close. So again, great addition to the Mako lineup. As not only does it look fantastic, I think it has the perfect proportions for a smaller diver. One that offers a ton of comfort, it's still easy to read and use. One where the dial isn't too small. I just wish the loom was a little bit brighter, and the bracelet was a little bit better. But at this price range, there's always some compromises. However, let me know what you think about it down below, on the size, the design, and if that misprint is really a deal killer for you. And as always, you guys know what to do down below. Like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.